The Hundred Days War, the 2007 WGA Writer's Strike. November 2007, the internet is still in its adolescent years. Many users are still paying for Earthlink or AOL, and YouTube was launched only 18 months earlier. Although there are many new fledgling startups on the internet, content is growing at an exponential rate and the studio system has not missed a beat. Hollywood is already delivering content through new emerging digital technology from DVDs to streaming media, websites, cell phones, tablets, and computers, and the audience is growing as fast as the content can be created. Yet, with the growth of new digital content, the number of scripted television series is on the decline as viewers gravitate toward streaming services and personalized content available on their computer. The loss of these jobs and the redistribution of revenues and income has not gone unnoticed by the WGA. The WGA contract is renegotiated every three years like clockwork. 2007 also happens to be the third year in the WGA contract and writers who are all too aware of their reduced employment opportunities as well as the additional revenues that have been streaming into producers' coffers. These lost jobs and increased revenues come not only from digital media, but from the relatively new phenomenon of reality television. The WGA wants its place at the feeding trough, and the writers are willing to fight for it. The Writers Guild will have to renegotiate its agreement with the AMPTP, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which boasts a membership of more than 300 very powerful production companies. AMPTP is the collective bargaining mechanism for all the signatory production companies. Not only does AMPTP negotiate with the WGA, they have the authority to negotiate all entertainment industry guilds and union contracts, making them as powerful as a Star Wars Death Star exuding similar levels of empathy for any and all who are brave enough to defy them. AMPTP was set to renegotiate the contract, MBA, the Minimum Basic Agreement, which stipulates WGA prerogatives and dominion, in addition to covering everything from writer's pay scales for different specific work to residuals for completed work, their reuse and syndication, pension, creative rights and credits, as well as insurance and health benefits. The WGA versus AMPTP. David versus Goliath. Soon the Writers Guild of America, the negotiating body for writers in television and film, would be recognized as one of the most powerful labor unions in the country. Negotiations between AMPTP and the WGA began in July. Among the many issues were several key points hotly contended. The WGA asserted that writers deserved increased and additional residuals from DVD sales as well as percentage of the revenues generated by movies, television, and content distributed on the internet and consumed via new media devices such as cell phones, tablets, and computers. The WGA members argue that residuals from all completed works are no different than those of actors, and that residuals are a crucial part of compensation that augments a writer's income during times of unemployment, which is very common for most who work in television and film. AMPTP countered that they could not afford to pay any additional res residuals, as it was these revenues that enabled them to defray increased production costs as well as marketing expenditures. In addition, the WAGA contended that it should hold sway over reality television as well as animation, and they wanted residuals. The WGA contended that all those shows like Survivor were unscripted. The show's seasonal narrative, storyline, character development, and weekly scenarios are a product of the writer's work, and thus reality television should be covered under the new MBA. This new MBA would create credited titles such as Story Producer, and supervising story producer for any writer working with a reality series. The AMPTP agreed with them. Reality shows like Survivor are unscripted, and the writers deserved what they were currently getting. Nothing. In addition, in an effort to increase rapport and credibility with the AMPTP, WGA President Patrick Verone went into negotiations seeking a win-win for both the writers and the AMPTP. In a tit-for-tat gesture, Verone announced that the reality television as well as animation jurisdiction demands had been removed from the table in a last-minute effort to avoid a strike on the inference by the AMPTP that they would make similar concessions. Time was short. The final negotiations between the WGA and AMPTP were stalled. All hopes were to resolve the issues before the WGA's contract expired on August, October 31, 2007. The AMPTP reneged on their promise of compromise and held firm to all previous positions. They played a win-lose strategy in a zero-sum game and refused to budge on the caveat of residuals for all new media. 
Negotiations between the WGA and the AMPTP move forward as the clock ticked toward the contract expiration of October 31, 2007. The talks finally broke down over due to issues surrounding the new media royalties and WGA leadership recommended the strike that would begin 12.01 a.m. November 5th. Closely covered in the Los Angeles Times as well as the national press, the strike proved very damaging to the entertainment industry. By the end, the strike cost the local Los Angeles economy more than $3 billion in lost wages for writers and crew, as well as ancillary business like catering and equipment rental. Due to heavy financial bloodletting, AMPTP and the WGA went back to the negotiating table. Negotiators reached a tentative agreement on February 8th, and the WGA ratified the deal on February 10th. On February 23rd, the writers agreed to a mediated truce. The new MBA was signed on February 25th. The new contract gave WGA members residual payments for programs streamed online and a union prerogative over web programming it was hammered out, and the writers would now be paid for show stream, and WGA members would be hired to write original streaming content that would be covered under a union contract. The biggest failure of the strike was the inability of the large studios to see the unity within the unions that were blindsided by the coverage of WGA management and writer-producers such as showrunners and executive producers who had not previously crossed the picket line, shutting down television production, stunning the studios. The most successful part of the negotiation was how the WGA initially offered very strong concessions to avoid a strike. When AMPTP flexed their enormous corporate muscle, the WGA organized muscle of its own, enlisting high-profile A-list and feature writers as well as showrunners to go head-to-head -head against the AMPTP. These writer-producers became actively involved in, in leading the rank and file as part of the Contract Negotiations Committee and, they made, and became integral to the process from the very beginning of the negotiations. The power that these well-known writers brought to the negotiations was used by the WGA to create awareness and visibility, reminding AMPTP of the high-value, creative talent that members of the AMPTP were foregoing every week that the writers were on strike. Their presence had, been, had a galvanizing effect, and the writers in the WGA were soon joined by the Screen Actors Guild and the Teamsters on the picket line. In the past, the corporation passed success at creating management class of writer-producers who crossed the picket line failed in this strike. Never before had creators and executive producers of series walked out on production duties during a WGA strike. This strategy shut down the television with such rapidity that studios were not expecting it. David Goodman explains, the studios were really caught off guard. All the preparations that the studios made in the lead up to the strike were unraveled a little bit because television got shut down so quickly. The WGA claimed the resolution of the strike as a victory, securing some concessions from the AMPTP in a partial agreement. Although, although they failed to gain the prerogative over union reality television and animation or increase in DVD residuals. Because of a recent agreement between the AMPTP and the Directors Guild, the WGA secured residual payments for programs streamed online at the same rate as DVDs, and WGA members were hired to write original content for the web and would be covered under union contracts. The mistrust and conflict remains as the cornerstone of the relationship between the WGA and the AMPTP.